our right to be there. What right will we have to be there? Did we not by our sins take part in that unholy rebellion which rashly sought to dethrone the glorious King of creation? And did we not in times past walk according to the course of this world, according to the evil prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now works in the sons of disobedience? And did we not all at once live in the lusts of our flesh? And were we not by nature the children of wrath, even as others are? But we who were once enemies and alienated in our minds through wicked works shall then see God face to face, and his name shall be on our forehead. We who earned banishment shall enjoy communion. We who deserve the pains of hell shall know the bliss of heaven and all through the tender mercy of our God. Mercy is an attribute of God, an infinite and inexhaustible energy within the divine nature which disposes God to be actively compassionate. Both the Old and New Testaments proclaim the mercy of God, but the Old has more than four times as much to say about it as the New. We should banish from our minds forever the common but erroneous notion that justice and judgment characterize the God of Israel, while mercy and grace belong to the Lord Jesus. There is in principle no difference between the Old Testament and the New. In the New Testament scriptures there is a fuller development of redemptive truth, but one God speaks in both dispensations, and what he speaks agrees with what he is. God is merciful as well as just. He has always dealt in mercy with mankind and will always deal in justice when his mercy is despised. If we could remember that the divine mercy is not a temporary mood, but an attribute of God's eternal being, we would no longer fear that it will someday cease to be. Nothing that has occurred or will occur in heaven or earth or hell can change the tender mercies of our God. However his mercy stands, a boundless, overwhelming immensity of divine pity and compassion. Could our failure to capture the pure joy of mercy consciously experienced be the result of our unbelief or our ignorance or both? God said about one group of people, the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. To receive mercy, we must first know that God is merciful. We must believe that God's mercy is boundless, free, and through Jesus Christ our Lord, available to us now in our present circumstance. Seek God's mercy through Jesus Christ, and you will not be disappointed.